Welcome to today's Pattern Keeper tutorial where we're going to look at how we can use Pattern Keeper on a computer. So Pattern Keeper is a Android app that we commonly use on a tablet or an Android phone. So people who don't have a tablet or an Android phone but do have a computer, there is an option to use an Android emulator on that computer to be able to use Pattern Keeper. So there are two commonly used Android emulators that are available for free that you can download. The first one is BlueStacks and the second one is Knox Player. Uh, there are probably others, but these are the two um, that are most commonly used and that are recognized. These are both available for Windows and for Mac. Now I personally find uh, BlueStacks more user friendly, so that's what I'm going to show you today. So I've already downloaded the BlueStacks file and installed it because that would be really boring to watch in reality. Um, but to access it for when you want to download, you just need to go to your browser and go to BlueStacks dot com forward slash download and if it doesn't automatically select the correct operating system you can just select it on the right and similarly if you want to use Knox go to bignox.com and you'll be able to download it from there so as I said I've already installed BlueStacks but I've done nothing with it rather than uh, other than just run it so I'll just open the screen now so what you'll see on the screen is what happens when you first open the application. Just like getting a brand new tablet, you need to give it some basic information, um, such as which language files and so on you want to install. So we'll start with this. I'm going to go with English UK. And it's going to install that language pack for me. So once that's been done, it's going to ask for some extra information, just like an Android tablet would. So it needs me to sign into my Google account. Now I already have a Google account. If you don't, you get the opportunity to create one here. Um, for obvious reasons, I'm not going to show my account details. So I will be back shortly after I've signed in. Welcome back. So I've signed in to my account and put my password in and now obviously it's going to ask me to accept the Google Play Terms of Service, which we'll do so below. So it's going to check the information uh, and then take me to the desktop of what is effectively my tablet now on my computer. So the easiest way to think of this is this is now a separate device that is running just happens to be using the same screen, keyboard and mouse if you have one plugged in. So <clears throat> just like is advised for someone using a tablet, there are a few things that you will need to install. Obviously one is the Pattern Keeper app itself and secondly is your cloud service app. So if you use Dropbox or Google Drive or Apple Cloud, um, whichever app you prefer is the app that you should install onto the device. So because this is effectively an Android tablet, we already have the Play Store. So we go into our Play Store. And on the top left hand side, you'll see there is the hamburger. Here, if I already have an account and maybe I've installed on a tablet already, I will be able to see uh, what I have in my library of applications. And as you can see, my library isn't big because I don't generally use Android devices. Um, but I will show you searching. So we'll start. I'm going to search for Pattern Keeper. And we can see it's the first one that comes up here. We recognize this little icon. And I'm going to install it. And once this is installed, I'm also going to install um, Google Drive. In fact, it may already be installed. Google Drive. Install. So those are both installing. So what we can see at the bottom while those are happening is that we've got the standard buttons 
that you would get on a tablet. So the triangle is effectively your back button. The circle will return you to your uh, tablet uh, desktop effectively or home screen. And the square is what you would select if you have applications open to either flip between applications or to close them. So I'm just going back to my desktop now and we can see we have Pattern Keeper and Google Drive will still be downloading and there it is, it's just popped up. So before I open the application, something to be aware of is um, some of the preferences within BlueStacks. So obviously this is on a Mac, so I have a preferences menu. If you're on Windows, your menus will look slightly different to each other. So the reason I'm showing this is that by default, uh, BlueStack starts at a relatively low resolution, low screen resolution. So this is equivalent to say maybe a phone screen. And if I ran Pattern Keeper using this screen resolution, it would um, give me the phone user experience and not the tablet user experience. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change my screen resolution to a higher resolution. Um, obviously, this is dependent on what your screen can support. Now, in order to do that, I need to restart BlueStack, so it will do that for me. So we're just going to restart. Um, BlueStacks can be quite resource intensive on your machine. So if you're using a, a lower end computer or maybe a, a fairly old one, it can take a bit of time to open and it can um, uh, also cause your fan to run and it will use a lot of processing power. So as you can see, it's now just reopening and we are just opening up my apps again and we're back to my desktop. Restarted BlueStacks after changing the screen resolution and I'm now going to go and open Pattern Keeper. So I'll just tap on the app, <coughs> excuse me, and accept the terms of service. So this is Pattern Keeper as um, when you first install it. You may have briefly seen a buy button up here. Now, because I've already used Pattern Keeper and I've already bought it, um, it has restored the purchase by itself because I used the same account that I use um, for my actual stitching. As you remember, I've installed Google Drive, so um, I'm able to import my chart uh, from Google Drive. So same as on a tablet, it should be the same user experience. I just happen to be using a mouse on my touchpad. I'm going to tap the plus. I get the message that I want where I want to open a file. And we'll see on the left hand side uh, the options that I've got. So I've got Drive option because I installed my Google Drive. If I had installed Dropbox, I would see that here and so on. So I'm going to tap on Drive. And we're going to go to my uh, charts that I have in there, navigate to where they're stored, and I'm going to select Arcade Dragon. And as you can see, it's now starting to import. So I've imported Sake Dragon. And I have verified the import and we have come into the chart now. So as we can see, this is the tablet layout of the application. So we've got our three buttons on the top, we've got our legend on the right hand side and our stitch counts on the left. Um, so to navigate within BlueStacks using a uh, Android emulator, uh, you can use your keyboard or your mouse. So when you're in the movement mode, to move around, I can click and drag. So as you can see, I'm just clicking my left mouse button and dragging the screen while that mouse button is down. I can uh, also um, move up and down with my scroll wheel. Now, if you've got a mouse that has different configurable settings, then you can um, also look in those settings. If I tap uh, and hold the right control key on my keyboard, 
and then move my mouse uh, wheel, I can also zoom in and out using that. If I want to zoom in and out just using the keyboard, which sometimes is very handy because it gives you a bit more finesse than using the scroll wheel, then I use again the right control key on the keyboard and then there is the plus and minus button next to your backspace key, not the plus and minus button on your numeric keypad if you have one. That allows me to zoom in and out in steps, which is actually uh, gives me a little bit more control than the scroll wheel. So apart from that, it's very much the same as using on a tablet. So if I want to search, I select the magnifying glass and I can either tap on a symbol in the chart itself to do the highlighting or I can from the legend select the colour that I want to search for and do the same thing. So to mark off again we go to the mark off symbol and I either singly tap or I press and hold my mouse button down and just sort of wriggle my mouse just as I would be wriggling my finger over the symbols that I want to uh, highlight and then tap the check mark at the bottom. And similarly, if I want to park a thread here, I just tap my single thread. I tap more using my mouse and I select where I want to park it. In this case, I'm parking in the upper right hand you corner. Can see, there is no menu at the bottom when you're actually in Pattern Keeper itself in the chart view. So in order to get back to um, your home page or to your list view, you need to be able to pull up that menu. So you can do this by either dragging down from the top of the screen, or you can do the same by clicking and dragging upwards from the bottom of the screen. Um, I find from the top slightly easier and then whoop, and then tap in your back button, which will take you back to your chart list view, where you can then either uh, export your progress or uh, select another chart or whatever it is that you want to do. I hope that you found this tutorial useful um, and that you get lots of enjoyment out of your time stitching with Pattern Keeper. Take care and we'll speak soon.